Hey guys, it is Lucha here. So I've been writing out my thoughts and reflections on what happened exactly at the in hyphen fate tour, the Houston stop. I got back like one or two days ago and Honestly, it's just a lot and I feel like I needed to organize everything and write it out and just like share with you guys what my experience is. So some background context, I am a big engine. I've been following in hyphen basically since Ilian, like before they were in hyphen really. And I went to the manifesto tour last year. Um, I was so excited to go to the Fate Tour this year. I bought tickets for both New York Days and Chicago and Houston, but I happened to get VIP 1 for Houston, and I just got VIP 2 for the other places, so I decided to try to get rid of my other tickets and just focus on the VIP 1 experience. So I was just like so genuinely excited and hyped for this to be like the best concert ever, but Unfortunately, it just like didn't turn out that way. There were a lot of good times, but also some things that I wish I knew or like thought about before going. And I also have some advice for how to make the concert experience actually better. So hopefully this is like an educational video. So the first thing we should go over is basically just like, what the experience was like. I did film more of like a vlog style on the day of video, which I will, try to get up as soon as possible. Basically, my friend and I got to Houston. The day before the concert, we went shopping and then while we were eating, we got like an email. This is about 24 hours before the concert is supposed to start. So it was saying like some information. They said camping wasn't allowed. They said, here's the things that you can bring or can't bring, all of that. They also say that the merch tent opens at 10 a.m. on the next day. So the morning of the concert, we plan to leave at nine so that we can get there and start buying merch at 10. The line for the merch is so long, but luckily we find a different tent that's also selling merch. So we end up going there and we start chatting with some of the girls in line. It turns out the two girls that are in front of us were at the park across the street and they said they had been there for like three days, literally. They were talking about how there's this whole like fan-made line with um, wristbands and people had like numbers written on their hands and stuff. And they told us to like go across the street and try to get wristbands just in case they end up honoring the fan-made line. So we go and do that while they are holding our spot in line. And we talked to the organizer. Honestly, I felt bad for her. She looked like she was really like stressed and tired, which makes sense because she was probably up all night and like God knows how many days before trying to put everything together. Um, but she told us that she couldn't give us a number for the fan made line because they had stopped taking numbers at like 4 a.m. that morning when they reached like 180 people. And just for context about the numbers on this entire situation, I don't know what the total amount of seating is in Toyota Center, but they sold probably 250 tickets for VIP 1 and I'm guessing also 250 for VIP 2. I actually don't really know what the total amount of VIP tickets is. This is just something that I heard secondhand like sometime that day from somebody. So anyways, we failed to get the wristband numbers or whatever for the fan lines. So we just go back to the merch line, we buy our stuff. Uh, it takes a little while because people are kind of slow. One random thing that was kind of annoying, this is the Dark Blood tour or the Fate tour, right? But when I asked to buy an album, they were like, all we have is manifesto albums. And we were really early in line, so it's not like they sold out or anything. I think they just like didn't bring them, which is kind of weird. So if you're planning to go and buy one of the Dark Blood albums or any album that isn't manifesto at one of the later tour dates, just be aware. I don't know if they're like actually bringing them or anything like that. So anyways, we got our merch and then we're leaving and we go past like the check-in entrance on the side street, which is different from the street where they're selling merch because the center is like a whole block. And we go there and then we meet some other people and then they're telling us like, don't trust the fan made line at all because they were like, oh, the organizer like, you know, was giving lower numbers to people who are their friends. And it's just like not really fair for people who are out of town or can't take time off work, which is definitely valid. Plus like the actual event organizers had sent the email, but they only sent it one day before. And I think people started camping like three days before. So the whole thing was just like messy. But basically these people were like waiting on the property even though they said that people couldn't wait. I don't really know anything obviously about what actually happened or what the truth of the matter is because this is all stuff that I'm just like hearing secondhand on the day of. But just know that all of this is adding to my 
paranoia and stress and confusion about what exactly is supposed to happen and what is going on. So anyways, because we have our merch, we go back to our hotel. Right now it's probably around like 10, 45 in the morning or something. And they told us that we cannot check in or be on the property to line up to check in until 12.30. So we think that we have some time to go back. We eat brunch in the hotel real quick and then like just drop off our stuff and basically have to come back to Toyota Center. Okay, so when we go back, the whole game is changed and we're so stressed out. So basically there's the place where they told us to check in and then across the street is the parking lot. And because that, parking lot like and the sidewalk there is not considered the toyota center property everybody is lined up and there's probably like a couple hundred people there honestly and everyone is just waiting for 12 30 so because that's when they said that the check-in starts to get your wristbands and stuff and then we are really confused about where to go and like you know what is going on on the other side of the street so we end up asking some security guards and start talking to other fans around us and stuff like that and everyone is just kind of like saying different information at this point some people are like oh we're gonna honor the line some people are saying they're obviously not some people are saying you know it's dangerous because people are going to run across the street the security tells us that the houston police department is supposed to show up and like organize and help people walk across or something like that um and also people are just straight up yelling and like arguing by the way they're not just like spreading rumors but um we see that some people are like yelling at the security guard the people that i overheard were like the fan made line people were like basically just saying that the other people are going to try to run across the street and that they need to just honor the line or whatever um essentially the whole thing was just like very messy and also extremely stressful my friend and i ended up just going across the street and just like waiting because the security guard told us to wait in that area and i think they definitely didn't start at 12 30 probably after like one or two hours of waiting outside finally they just said like okay these people are gonna just start walking over and then the security was making a lot of threats too they were like if we see you pushing if we see you holding hands or running across the street or fast walking or anything we're just gonna not let you enter the stadium at all or like see the show at all anyways long story short of that whole situation is we ended up standing coincidentally in like a better area so we end up in the second group that gets to cross the street so we do end up checking in on our wristbands pretty early so when we're getting our wristbands they give us some more information they say come back at five so that you can start entering the stadium and going through like the bag check and stuff so at this point, it's like, I don't know, maybe 2 p.m. We go back to our hotel because we still haven't gotten ready because we, all we've been doing in the morning so far is a merch and check-in. So we need to go back, we got ready. We plan to leave at four and then like get there at 4.30 because they said check-in was five. But our friends that, some of our friends that we made in line while waiting for the check-in, they were saying that at 3 p.m. they texted us and said, hey, there's a huge line outside for people trying to check in, so maybe I should come back. So we try to rush the end of us getting ready and stuff like that and just like go back over as soon as possible. It is way before 5 p.m. at this point, by the way. So again, security was just fake news. Anyways, when we finally got back, the line is so freaking long to enter through the security gates. Like the whole Toyota Center Stadium is like on a block, right? I am pretty confident that this line went like at least half of the entire stadium, maybe like around the third side too, but we didn't walk all the way to the end. It was just really crazy. We just ended up getting in line with our friends who were already there and then going through security that way. And then once we got in inside, there was also like another, you know, level of misinformation here where some of the security was saying like, hey, we don't care if you're VIP one or VIP two, just get in this line through the security. We're not honoring any of the wristband numbers. And then once we got inside, it turns out that they were like splitting the line between VIP one and VIP two. And they also gave us an additional wristband, like a green one so that they could say that, like you guys are VIP one or whatever. So anyways, we wait for another long time, but this is at least better because we're inside with the air conditioning and people can like sit down um, in their area and stuff as long as they're still in the right number order. So finally, they start letting us in for sound check. And this is the part I'm gonna kind of skip over because I've been recording for a long time already and haven't gotten to a lot of stuff. But basically the show itself, sound check, the concert, 
bro, it was amazing to see in hyphen like that. Like, I think if anything was a high point of this whole thing, obviously just seeing in hyphen up close could possibly make this worth it. But yeah, let me skip again to the end of the concert and talk about send off. So the second the concert ends, people are starting to leave and stuff. They put the lights back on and then we're taking like a couple of pictures by the front of the stage and everything like that. But we see that a lot of people are crowding towards one specific corner of the arena. And basically they had told us just like when we checked in with our VIP one wristbands, they gave us like a slip of paper that said, go wait in this area. And we didn't know anything about where that was because we were so focused on first getting into the concert and we didn't even like, we didn't even like think about what our plan was for send off, right? But anyways, we just go towards that corner because that's where everyone is, but it's like really, really unorganized. The security guards are already yelling at people, which is just par for the course. A lot of people are just like pushing around and there's no sort of like line or anything like that, right? So eventually they say like, hey, they just point out one girl and say, go up the stairs. And then uh, there's no like organization or anything there either. People are just like pushing and trying to get up the stairs. And that was really horrible, honestly, because I was standing there and trying not to like push or anything, but everyone was shoving against me. And I was like, bro, this is just like a crowd crush situation. And there was a girl that was like not too far from me. And she honestly started getting like a panic attack and like, breathing hard and crying and everything like that. So we were trying to get her out, but the whole time that was happening, no one stopped pushing. Everyone just kept trying to go up the stairs and stuff. So I was just like, this is just a zoo. It's not okay. But anyway, seeing that girl have a panic attack, like secondhand stressed me out as well. And so I tried to go up the stairs and I'm just like following everyone. So they bring us to the second room, which is really small. And there's like a gate off one side. I think it's like normally supposed to be a bar area or a clubhouse or something like that. But they're like, okay, just wait against here. And then in hyphen supposed to come out. I feel like the send off um, format was kind of different from videos that I saw for like LA or Glendale, because for those it was like a huge gate. And then in hyphen was just like there, but here it was just like, a line of gates and then the wall and then in hyphen was supposed to like walk through here but everyone was here on like this side uh every fan was on this side so basically we wait there for a little while longer it was horrible everyone was like pushing and shoving again as usual i guess finally after waiting a while in hyphen comes out and it just gets like it was already uncomfortable, but it just gets like insanely uncomfortable because it's so hot. Everyone's like pushing against you. Plus now everybody is like yelling in hyphen members names and trying to like get their attention. And then everyone is like holding whatever they want to get signed or their cameras or their um, phones and stuff. And then just like trying to like wave it around in front of people. So I got hit in the head like so many times too. And it was just like a mess, honestly. I think one of the security people was saying, don't worry, everyone will get their like chance and stuff. But it was just not true because a lot of people in the front would like try to interact with one member. But then like when someone else, because they were coming in a line, they just like stayed there and waited for the next person to come. So it was like everyone in the second, third, whatever back rows were not able to interact with any of the idols unless you just like shoved your way through, which again is another problematic behavior. So basically, the entire send off thing was just like too much. And by that point, after all of the pushing and shoving and like dealing with other people all day, I just like was done at that point and I didn't have the energy to go through with it. I even tried to leave and go to like in a different area of that like club room, but there was like multiple police officers there by that point. And then the police officer said to me that I couldn't like leave. So I just like stood back by the bar area and just like watched everything for a while. So yeah, I would say the send off experience was extremely bad and I was stressed out just like as a fan and I think like because I was watching from a distance a little bit, I saw like Jay in particular, who's my bias and I always pay attention to him. He looked just so like stressed out and sad, like when people kept like yelling at him and shoving things at him and stuff. So I just felt like, so dude, that got to me. Like I felt like that was such a stressful moment and I just felt bad for him. There was a time when he was like closest to me and I could like, I could have tried harder, honestly, to try to get his attention and stuff, but I just didn't want to because he already looked so overwhelmed. But I will say like, I think Nikki and Hee Sung and Jungwon were like pretty happy with everyone being like energetic and trying to like interact with fans and like smiling and stuff, but not Jay, man, not Jay, he was, he was done. 
Okay, so finally send off ends. My friend told me that she saw something on TikTok where they had actually like cut the send off short because some fans were just like being kind of crazy, apparently like choking each other with lanyards or whatever. Like, I don't really know what's going on. I didn't see anything like that. The whole thing ends, it's probably 11 or 12 at this point, and we finally like leave the Toyota Center. Bro, long freaking day, longest day of my life, seriously. I didn't even like realize, I, like I knew this was gonna take some energy and effort, but the energy and effort that was required was just truly undescribable. I checked my stats on my Apple Watch like later, and then I think it was like six miles of walking, God knows how much standing when I was like in the concert and like jumping and dancing around waiting in the lines and whatever. Thank God I wore flat shoes. It was not possible to do that in heels. I saw some girls wearing heeled boots. I was like, must be seated tickets because there is just no way. Plus it was just so tiring, like talking to everyone, whether it was getting yelled at by security, meeting other engines, like a lot of engines were very nice and like even gave out some freebies and stuff like that. But a lot of it was like really exhausting too because everyone was just trying to like figure out what was going on. There was all this like gossip and rumors and oh, this is happening here or there. And like, you didn't even know like who you could trust honestly because it was like, do I know that this person is giving me the right information? Because it is somewhat of like a zero sum game at the end of the day. Like if someone else is closer to the front of the line or whatever, they're just gonna have a better view of Enhyphen than you. So that really kind of like messed with my mind and made me very paranoid. So yeah, hearing different info from everyone was just mentally exhausting on top of like going through the crowds and the lines and um, plus it was just like hot out because it was Texas, like it was just humid outside and I was like trying not to mess up my um, makeup and stuff at the end and like have my outfit and carrying my light stick and portable charger and everything. It was just a long day. Like, was it worth everything to see in hyphen? Um, I honestly, at this point, cannot answer that question because I just have to think about it a lot more. I do know that seeing them was very fun. Like even right now, all day today, criminal love and sacrifice just been like stuck in my head. Like, bro, it's crazy. But I have to say it's gonna be a really, really long time before I even consider going to another K-pop concert, especially as VIP one. Okay, so it was a lot just now explaining everything that happened on the day of, but I want to also reflect on the experience and point out what I think is like the main problems. And since I don't wanna just point out problems, also I'm gonna give an opinion on my advice as for like how we can solve and improve the concert experience in the future. Okay, so first of all, I think what, I think a very important lens for looking at this situation that happened is this idea which is called like race to the bottom. Basically the incentives are such that every K-pop stan or concert goer, especially in this like GA floor situation, obviously everyone wants to have the best chance of being up close with the artists that they like and paid to see. So their main incentive is basically just to do anything that they can in order to get closer. Whether that means the three days camping before, whether that means telling people the wrong information on purpose so that they go in the wrong direction and you can get up faster. Like this is kind of what every rational person who's attending the concert and bought the ticket would do. So given that everybody is just kind of like out for their own self-interest in that way, I think what needs to happen is the organizers, either security or in hyphen tour management, or I don't know who, they need to do a much better job at enforcing the actual standards and getting information out about what is acceptable or not acceptable because otherwise the concert goers are just going to like, you know, throw things to the wolves. There's no coordination. They're just gonna do what's best for themselves. And I really like don't blame them for that. Obviously I was also trying to do that. And I wish that I could just say like, we need to just trust other engines and be better. And yes, like true, but I'm also not, I think naive enough to say like, 
oh, we should all just be nice and that will solve the problem because it probably is not gonna solve the problem. Like we all know that there's just gonna be someone crazy who is gonna ruin it for everyone. Like there's sassings or whatever. Like people apparently tried to like kidnap Jungwon at this concert. So I don't even really know what to say about that. There really just has to be some better like regulation and system and rules about what is going on. So one example is like, when the security guards were yelling at us during the check-in process, they were saying, you know, don't run across the street. It's unsafe for everyone. Um, we need to call the police or whatever. But the truth of the matter is, is that if I was like me in that situation, obviously I'm gonna try to run across the street because I want to be earlier to get my wristband. What they really should have done was be a lot more clear about the rules for camping around you know, who is getting the wristbands and in what order, if you're VIP one or VIP two, because everything that they didn't clarify just caused a lot more stress and misinformation and made people more desperate essentially, to the point that people were just like, okay, well, I don't really know. And there doesn't seem to be any rules for other people. So what I'm gonna do is just run across the street. If either security and hyphen, whoever was able to set those rules very clearly ahead of time, then I do not think that people would get to the point of being so messy and desperate, basically. They should have put together some other sort of, I don't know, lottery system, treasure hunt, like, I don't know. There's like a million different things that you could do that would have avoided this situation and just like try to improve the concert experience for everybody. Hey guys, I forgot to talk about this part and go back to it in my long rant, but going back to the idea I brought up, which is race to the bottom. But my point was that because everyone attending was trying to like one up each other and get like a tiny bit closer on the floor, we basically spent the entire day like waiting in lines, dealing with security, talking to people, all of that. And it was so tiring, honestly. And at the end of the day, everyone wasn't really able to give their full energy to cheering for in hypen or just even enjoying the concert. If everyone had just agreed to show up one hour before sound check, it could have been fine, but everyone was trying to like one up each other. So the whole thing got crazier and crazier in terms of competition. And I just feel like there's no way that NGs or K-pop stands or any audience people are going to be able to resist the urge to show up just like an extra five minutes early and then before you know it you're in the same situation so what i'm calling for is a stricter control from the actual outside party which most likely is going to have to be the venue security or in hyphen tour management and i know that this is only in hyphen second concert honestly there were some of these problems when i went to the manifesto tour last year but it seems like just because this tour was so much bigger um they're selling out bigger stadiums and stuff like that the amount of people is also like greatly increased, right? So all of these problems get worse and worse the more people that you have. So I really hope that either they switch to just like seated for VIP next year or um, or they come up with some sort of better system because these problems are only gonna get worse and worse. Same thing for the send off, honestly. Another example is like, I know that there was some people at the send off that I was at where they got things signed by every single member. Meanwhile, a lot of people, me included, had no interactions with any member. I think it would be so much better for everyone involved if there was at least some semblance of, hey, we're gonna make sure that this is fair for everyone because the way that it is right now, it just encourages all this like backstabby, I'm out for myself sort of behavior. And it just makes the whole experience not fun, honestly. Like, like I said, I am really happy that I saw it in Hyphen, but is it worth going through that again? Like I'm really thinking twice about it now. So yeah, I think that was kind of a lot. I am exhausted now. I've been talking for like 30 minutes. Another thing outside of the concert experience is just like for fans, I know I said, I don't think we can just rely on like, hey guys, be better. But I would say that it is important for all fans to just like remember that the idols are also people and stuff. like. In that send off situation with Jay, I was just like, I felt so bad for him genuinely because everyone was just like yelling at him, shoving things at him. He just looked like sad. And I get that everyone wants to have their moment with their idols and stuff, but it just like probably sucks and takes a huge toll on them too. Like I was stressed just watching him go through that stressful situation. So yeah, I think that's the end of this video. 
If you guys have been to other K-pop concerts, let me know if you had an experience like this. I really genuinely hope not, to be honest, because I have been to other K-pop concerts and I don't know like what or why exactly, but this was just like on a different level from before. I think it's generally just like a lot more chill when you have seated tickets and you're like, you know, oh, I'm gonna be in this one spot. Like there's no scheming, there's no manipulating, there's no trying to get ahead of anything because there's nothing to get ahead of. You already know I'm gonna come here and sit in this spot. In conclusion, GA floor is not the move. And the second thing I think that I realize is like, the other fans are really important to your other experience. Like they cut our send off short because some people were acting crazy and they didn't do that in Glendale or LA. So like choosing a, choosing where to go for your concert, like considering other engines, they, that also pretty greatly affects your concert experience, which I think I didn't realize before going through all of this. If you guys have comments, questions, obviously leave it below, leave a like. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.